fire breathers what is going on happy friday if you're watching this on the day that i'm recording it it is friday the 18th of december 2020 the year that has felt like a decade if you are finding this at any other point in time obviously the future from when i'm recording it what i am going to be talking about here today is two of the workouts that are programmed they are both hefty chippers. One of them is a hero wad. The other is a spin on a classic girl workout. And these are great workouts for when you need a long endurance cardio burner, minimal equipment, but some quick equipment required. What and no visuals or effects or demos today. So you can listen to this like a podcast and bookmark these, keep these in mind for when you need a workout if you're not tackling them today. So first up, we have the Hero Wad Blake. Blake is, well, let's read the bio first. U.S. Navy Senior Chief Cryptologic Technician David Blake McLendon, 30, of Thomasville, Georgia, assigned to Naval Special Warfare Group to support activity in Norfolk, Virginia, was killed on September 21st, 2010, in a helicopter crash during combat operations in the Zabul province of Afghanistan. McLendon is survived by his wife, Kate McLendon, his parents, David and Mary Ann McLendon, his brother, Chris McLendon, and his sister, Kelly Lockman. And I believe with the description that I found and posted on Instagram via Wadwell CrossFit, this was posted as a hero wad towards the end of 2010. So it was shortly after he died. And so, yeah, this is like a 10 year old hero wad. All right. As prescribed, Blake is four rounds for time of a 100 foot overhead walking lunge with a 45 or a 25 pound plate, 30 box jumps at 24 or 20 inches, 20 wall ball shots at 20 or 14 pounds, the assumption is to a standard target height of 10 and 9 feet, and then 10 handstand push-ups. So those are your Rx as prescribed movements. Well, I don't have plates. I don't have a box. I don't have a wall ball. I can't do handstand push-ups. So here's your different scaling options that you could look at for this. The 100 foot overhead walking lunge with a plate 24, 25 pounds. That is relatively light loading, respectively for males and females. If you don't have a plate, you can use a dumbbell, you can use a kettlebell, you can use two dumbbells or two kettlebells if they're lighter and you have the mobility and you can do that. You can use a book, you can use a sandbag, you can use a loaded backpack, weighted object overhead. Worst case scenario, or maybe not worst case, I retract that. I'm sorry. Bad word choice on my end. You can use a broomstick. You can use a Swiffer. Just something up overhead. Okay. Again, you can even just hold your hands together if you absolutely need to. 100 feet does not need to be 50 feet down and back. If you have some space, you can measure that out and figure out, okay, it's four times down and back. You can get real nerdy with it and figure out how many feet is one lunge length for you and do the math that way. You can make it easy and call it 50 steps. I mean, it's up to you, okay? Kind of how you want to break that down. All right, the 30 box jumps, 24 and 20 inches. Do you have a stable bench or steps that you could be jumping onto? Again, this is something where you can get creative with it. Um, If you're outside or if you live somewhere that you can lunge 100 feet down and there's a bench on the side of the road or if you're out at a park or something in your local neighborhood, you can jump up onto that. 
guesstimate the inches. Uh, um, you, again, if you have absolutely no equipment, your sub for box jumps would be tuck jumps. So um, you can get into your ready stance position and as you jump up in the air, you pull your knees to your chest and do a tuck jump. You don't need the squat at the bottom. You can, but yeah, tuck, tuck jumps would be a sub for box jumps. If you cannot jump, but say you do have a step, you can absolutely sub in step ups. You would do 30 total, 15 each leg. And again, guesstimating the inches on that, 24 or 20 steps. Wall balls, 20 of them. So keep in mind, I think people forget that, especially CrossFitters, we think wall ball, we think the gorgeous rogue balls that we use for wall balls. Those don't need to be what you use. Other fitness brands and medicine balls have been around in the fitness industry for a while. So any weighted ball could work. You might have one of these lying around in your basement um, and you never thought to use it as a wall ball. They tend to be smaller. So just take some adjusting if you're used to the bigger ones, but play with it. Have fun. I have seen people in conventional fitness centers doing wall balls without throwing it against the wall to where you just squat and toss the ball straight up in the air and catch it. If you don't have concrete or something where that you can throw the ball against, you can absolutely do that. So if you have a weighted ball that you can toss up in the air and catch, go for it. If you don't have a ball, even a lightweight ball to toss and catch to simulate the wall balls, you can do thrusters. <laughs> lightweight thrusters, so 20, 14 pounds is light for a weightlifting movement. You can, I would recommend using a single dumbbell since that will be lighter and use the lightest dumbbell you have. If you need to make it single arm to kind of redistribute and mimic that light weight, you can do 10 single arm thrusters on one side and 10 single arm thrusters on the other since more than likely, you know, or do double dumbbell thrusters if your dumbbells are light enough. Again, if you have absolutely no weights, no dumbbells, use a broomstick, use your Swiffer mop handle and do a thruster with it. It'll be light enough that 20 will sub in for the wall balls just fine. Okay, now the handstand push-ups. Handstand, push handstand push-ups are, again, technically a body weight, no equipment workout. You just need yourself and a wall that you're not going to kick a hole through. Yours truly, me personally, I have done handstand push-ups out here at a local, um, they call it like a, 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 a sport vereen, so like, a, um, like the rec center type facility against their fence. I rolled up a sweatshirt for my head and did it against a fence. So again, if you're willing to get creative with where you're doing these things and being, you know, that kind of crazy fitness person out in the wild, there are places that you can do this. Um, but if you don't have a place to do handstand push-ups or you do not have them at all, you don't have that as a skill, your scaling options are to do pike handstand push-ups. So whatever you're doing the step ups on or the box jumps off of, you can put your feet on them, tuck your head underneath your hands and do strict pike handstand push-ups. Keep the reps the same, 10. If you are unable to get upside down, so you can't, you can do down dog handstand push-ups as well. That counts too, that inverted pressing motion. But if getting upside down and pressing is not safe, you're not comfortable, you don't like it, you can do a standing strict press. And to really mimic the range and strength motion of that handstand push-up, you will actually start your rep at the top, bring it down to eyeball level, 
and then press back up so you're not going all the way down to your shoulders and getting that rebounding elastic effect. Stopping here and pressing back up. Again, if you do that version, you can use dumbbells, you can use a barbell, you can use a dowel, broomstick, Swiffer, have a backpack. Um, I've seen people use cinder blocks. So again, you can get creative with it. Now, I always love to add on to when we do hero workouts. Hero workouts are always fantastic workouts. They're, they're, they're difficult. They flow together beautifully and always ultimately at the end of the day, they are a hero wad. There's more weight to this workout than any other workouts that we undertake. So scale as needed, right? Scaling just means that you are keeping the integrity of the workout and making it meet where you're at. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. We are not here to be broken down. We are not here to not be able to walk tomorrow or lift our arms. But keeping in mind that it's not supposed to be easy. Okay, so we need to play with that line of what is difficult for us. But what is within our grasp. What can we accomplish? Wanting to give up is different than not being able to continue. My personal philosophy, a lot of the ways that I program, I always love challenging athletes, myself included, but with, you're going to want to stop. You're going to want to do two rounds. You're going to want to only do this weight. You can do more. It just sucks, but you can. And knowing that you can do more and talking yourself into finishing strong. And then when you get done, knowing that you accomplished it, that's what we're after. So I hope that makes sense. Keep his story in mind as you do it. Oh, another point too. It is four rounds, a little bit longer. You can do two or three rounds to scale if you need to based on time. Again, I don't believe in time caps, but that's a whole other <laughs> whole other lecture or podcast or video chat. But if you are on a time constraint and you want to get this done, like give yourself, okay, I'm going to do two rounds and get it done. All right. So a uh, 13 minute mark and we are done talking about Blake. Your other option for today, if you have a place to do pull-ups and you do have a weight, either a kettlebell or a dumbbell, and you have a place to run or you have an erg, some piece of cardio equipment, your other workout for today is Pyramid Double Helen. Helen is an awesome burner of a workout, and this is exactly what it says. Double Helen done as a pyramid. So you are starting this workout with a 1200 meter run, 1,200 meters, then doing 63 American kettlebell swings, one and a half and two pood, 36 pull-ups, 800 meter run, 42 kettlebell swings, 24 pull-ups, 400 meter run, 21 kettlebell swings, 12 pull-ups time. This is, again, pyramids starting wide, building to smaller rep schemes, shorter run distance. Uh, um, when you do this, again, this is supposed to be long. That first chunk of the 1,200 meters, the 63 kettlebell swings, and the 36 pull-ups is going to take you a good amount of time, but that is half of your work, okay? So... The great thing about going big to small is you can tell yourself that each round, right? Okay, the next round isn't necessarily going to get easier, but you are looking at less work each round. Um, the running distance on this, you are looking at approximately, um, again, about two minutes for the 400 meter, four minutes for the 800 meter, four, five, six six ish 
minutes for that first 1200, maybe, maybe eight, depending on your pacing, um, what your weather is like, how you've warmed up beforehand and how great of a runner you are. For scaling options for the run, if you have a rower or a skier, I have to do this backwards, I'm sorry, because the 1200 meters throws me off. Um, you're looking at 1500 meters, a 1K and a 500 meter on a rower or a skier. If you're biking, you're doing double the distance that it says to run. So um, 2.4 meters, no, not 2.4. Yeah, maybe, ah, stand by for math. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 2.4 meters and then 1.6 meters, and then 800 meters if you're biking. If you have no erg, you cannot run, you have no treadmill, and you have to sub in burpees, you're looking at doing 75 burpees, 50 burpees, 25 burpees. Okay. Cardio, no. Kettlebell swings. Um, standard American kettlebell swings between your knees, all the way up overhead, okay? Arms don't necessarily have to be straight, but needs to be in line over your shoulders. 63, again, is a big chunk. You can look at doing it in half. My favorite strategy is always to divide things up by thirds and never do things in smaller than chunks of a third. And if you do a half or just over half, so say you do 35 reps and then do another big set and then another set to get you to 63 where you can kind of shake off your grip a little bit more as you head into those pull-ups. Again, if you don't have the kettlebell, use a dumbbell. Um, whether you use a single or a double dumbbell is up to you based on what weights you have, and if you want to equal the weight of RX or if you need to scale the weight down. Again, up to you. If you do not have a kettlebell or a dumbbell to swing, but you wanna get after this workout, again, ideas, you can do a loaded backpack to swing. Um, just, again, watch overhead with the backpack as you swing it up over your head. You can use, again, a cinder block. You can get creative with this. If you have a sandbag or if you have a bag of mulch, awkward swinging, but again, you're looking for fitness, just get it done. For the pull-ups, if you have a place that you can do butterfly or kipping pull-ups, go for it. If you need to do strict pull-ups, just based on, again, what equipment or pull-up setup you have, that's fine, you can do that. Um, if you're doing strict pull-ups and that's a high volume of strict pull-ups for you, I would cut the reps down a little bit, but again, make it be challenging. Don't just be like, well, I'm going to do 10, a little more than 10, but if you do not have pull-ups and you don't have a place to do pull-ups, you can do Australian rows or inverted rows where you go underneath a sturdy table or a bench and do a row from underneath the object. You can also do bent over rows if absolutely needed, if you can't pull your body weight or if you have nothing to hang from. Bent over rows with a exercise band, with the dumbbells or kettlebells, whatever you have access to. And then work your way down the line. There is some strength for today. If you have a barbell or some other implement that you want to do some strict strength work with, but we're focusing on the metabolic conditioning and the longer pieces to help us build our base because the open is coming March 11th for three weeks. So build that base, get that cardio rolling so that as we roll into the new year and as we head into the open, we are prepared. So awesome. 20 minutes. Any other questions, please know that my DMs on Instagram for Dracarys Fit are not working. So you can DM my personal account, Ray of Sunshine, 
uh, um, on Instagram. You can DM on Facebook. I actually deleted Facebook from my phone and I don't really use it on my iPad. I do have Messenger. So again, you can find me there. I just don't check it very often. But if needed, you can shoot me questions that way. Email is probably the best way to get a hold of me if you want a good response. Dracarisfit at gmail.com. And if you have my WhatsApp number, you can, which is my German phone number, if you happen to have that as well, you can absolutely text me that way. I have no problems responding to your texts. So um, if you're on TikTok and you want to DM me on TikTok as well, you can find me there at Jakaris Fit. So I'm around. I am available. If you have any questions or concerns or if you're not quite sure how to take all this information and blend it together to make the workout work for you and you need me to tell you here's what you're doing, hit me up. I love doing that kind of stuff. So thank you again for tuning in. And if you have content ideas or anything that you want to see from me or hear from me, or if you want me to talk about or address, let me know. I am open to suggestions. Thanks for the follow and Jakaris.